Chapter 9 The Butterfly I woke up. The sun was noon bright. I heard a squad of rats or something in the direction of the closet. I turned and looked. It was the runt. She was on her knees in the closet, scraping and pulling suitcases and shoes around. The back of my skull was sore and throbbing. I touched it. I felt a crusty cap over the bump. I thought as I watched the runt's rear end, what the hell is she doing? I said, Damn, bitch, can't you put a damper on that racket? I got an aching skull. I wake up. The first living thing I pin is the rusty black ass of a dizzy whore. She's digging a ditch in the closet. Now there's got to be a prettier way to start a day. She snapped her head around and said, I'm looking for the reefer. I feel low. Where did you stash it? I couldn't find it last night when I came in. I got up and went to the closet. I ran my hand into the coat pocket stash. I separated my stuff from the reefer inside the pocket. I gave her the can. I saw two lonely saw bucks on the dresser. I went back and got into bed. I said, Bitch, I take an outside stash where else? I don't want to come home some night and greet a roller. Wouldn't it be a bitch if he had that can of one to two in the penitentiary in his mitt? Christ, your scratch for last night is shitty. What happened? Some joker stick you up? That reef ain't making you lazy, is it? A double saw take for a young freak bitch is outrageous. Shit. You broke your luck for the double saw with the love of sugar blue eyes. You must have shot a blank the rest of the night. I'll murder you, bitch, if I find you freak off all night with your tricks for a double saw. She was licking at the sides of the joint she had rolled. She sat on the side of the bed next to me. She rolled her sassy eyes at me. She said, Daddy, I'm your girl. If I ever stop loving you, I'm going to quit horn for you. If you don't croak me, I'll get another black man when we're washed up. Right now, I'm in your corner all the way. White tricks don't move me. I want to vomit when they paw and slobber over me. I baby talk them, but I hate them. Daddy, I just want their scratch. I get a thrill with them, all right. It knocks me out that here I am, a black nigga bitch, taking their scratch. A lot of them are clean-cut, high muckety-mucks in the white world. Some of them show me pictures of beautiful wives and cute children. It makes me feel greater than those white bitches living in soft luxury. Those white broads got nigga maids they laugh at. They think we ain't good for nothing but clowning and cleaning. It would give them a stroke to see their trick husbands moaning and groaning and licking between a black whore's thighs. I know I ain't got no silky hair and white skin. I'm damn sure hip those white men ain't leaving heaven to come to hell every night just for the drive. They coming because those cold ass white broads in heaven ain't got what these black whores in hell got between their legs. Black and low as I am, I got secrets with their white men those high class white bitches ain't hip to. Now daddy, we rap so little, I got earned away. I ain't nobody's fool but yours. I wanted to run down to you this morning about last night. You put me on the dummy, remember? After I turned Chuck at the Martin, I got aroused. Two white vice coppers picked me up. They rolled me around and felt over me. One of them was a mean, nasty bastard. The other, the blonde nice one, was sorry for me. Nasty said, I know this black bitch is a sitch ringer for those eight larceny from the person's beefs. We ought to take her down and put her on a show-up or two. What the hell, Carl? We know she's a whore. Blondie said, But Max, she ain't no hard leg. She's just a beautiful, young, sexy kid with a mother to support. You know how tough it is for Boots to get three squares and a roof in this town. Let's give her a break and cut her loose. Jesus, Max, this broad has got a pair of thighs on her. She's soft as kitten fur. Nasty said, Carl, you sure got a weak spot for spades. 
This broad says she's broke. That black ass of hers ain't enough to buy a pass from me. If she ain't too shy to show what her derby's like, maybe, I say just maybe, I might give her a break. I'm driving into this alley. Carl, you test her lid and snatch. If you ain't raving how great it is upstairs and down when you finish, I'm gonna wheel out of this alley and toss her black ass in jail. I'm gonna book her on those eight counts of larceny. If she's lucky, she'll get a deuce. Daddy, Blondie pushed my head down to his lap. Then I got on the back seat with him. That freak bastard Max turned around and kept his flashlight on us the whole time. I made Blondie holler. I finished with Blondie. Max got back there with me. For a half hour, he called me filthy names. He punched and pinched me. I'm sore all over. Blondie begged him to stop. My ass feels like he split something back there. I had a rough time. Finally, they let me out. Max told me to never let him see me again. I was so scared I came in. That's why the scratch is short. Max will bust me if he sees me again. You're going to have to find me another street to work. I said, You square-ass stupid bitch. You think you're a brain because you're hip that white men sneak through the stockade to lay black whores? Ain't a nigga sealed in here that don't know that. It don't make you great because those white sick fools leave that fine pussy in heaven to find your stinking black ass in hell. You chicken-hearted bitch, you got aroused. They conned you to believe they could slap a bum rap on you. You're too dumb to know I'm gonna raise you. You rammed your funky finger in your sore ass. You took a powder from the track with a lousy double saw. You let those peck of wood coppers fuck you front, rear, sideways, and across. You simple bitch. I'm gonna find you another street to work? Now you got like a license to hustle this one? You ain't got to worry about Max and that other roller. Bitch, you can work it forever just so you don't get cancer of the cat or lockjaw. Bitch, if you don't get out of my face, I'm going to the chair for slaughtering you. Get your clothes on. Get in the street and hump up some scratch. Bitch, don't you come to that door unless you call me first. I ain't going nowhere. She had been taking sucks on the reefer while she was rapping. She was high when I gave her the rundown on how she had been conned by the rollers. She leaped off the bed and went to the closet. She dressed and jerked her head around the whole time. She knew I was angry. She was maybe afraid after that slaughter crack that I might goose her in the butt with my knife. She got out fast. I had Silas bring me some food and take my shirts and things to the cleaners. I ate and snorted some girl. Later, I banged some. Except for the bump on my skull that still ached a little, I felt all right. I remembered Satan and the demon wanting to see identification. I called Silas. He told me where to go. I could get a driver's license without a test for a saw buck under the counter. I dressed and made the trip. Sure enough, I copped. I was back home in an hour. I pulled a chair to the front window. I had my spyglass. It was still daylight. I didn't see the runt on the street. I spied into the greasy spoon across the street. The runt was sitting at the counter, talking to a big black stud in overalls. He had trick engraved all over him. I saw them leave together and come across the street toward the Martin Hotel. The scar-faced horn tutor who lived in 422 across the hall came out behind them alone. He got into a battered Ford and chugged away. It gave me an idea. After all, I could blow the run. I picked up the phone and asked for connection to apartment 422. The pretty yellow ex whore helloed. I was glad old Silas had given me the rundown on her. I could tailor my pitch. I said, now try to control yourself, baby. I'm the tall stud with the dreamy bedroom eyes across the hall in 420. I'm the guy with the pretty towel wrapped around his sexy hips. I got the same hips on now that you x-rayed. Remember that hump of sugar your peepers feasted on? She said, 
Maybe you shouldn't call me. I don't want an incident. What do you want? A lady doesn't accept phone calls from strangers. I said, a million dollars and a trip to the moon with a bored, trapped, beautiful bitch, you dig? I'm no stranger. I've been popping the elastic on your panties ever since you saw me in the hall. She giggled. I could hear the thrill in her voice. The horn blower had taken her off the track, but the hole was alive and thrashing inside her. She had class. She had done more than screw on the fire escape at high school. She said, I don't drink, and besides, I don't know you. I said, you met me in your first hot dream, remember? You know, that pretty joker in your little girl dreams that always faded when you woke up wet between the legs. You waited and wished. You lucky bitch, I stepped out of your dreams. I'm alive and real across the hall from you. Get over here, I'm gonna turn you on. Don't worry about the watchdog. I saw him split out of the greasy spoon 10 minutes ago. Baby, I'm gonna have to make one of my whores bake you a cake with a saw in it. She said, you're not married to one of them? I don't want my throat cut. I don't want to break an old habit breathing. I said, yeah, I'm married. I'm married to the whore game. You're still a member of the club yourself. You just ain't paid any dues lately. Maybe if you ain't full of shit, I can put you back in good standing. Now get over here. She said, I'm raw. I have to slip something on. I'll come over for a minute. You're not a hype. I'm not hip to anything but grass. I said, No, sugar. I'm a lover and a beggar. I got black gunion, baby. You hip? I hung up. I went to the dresser mirror and powdered my face. I brushed my hair with a damp brush. My mop was black, bright, and curly. I went to the closet and slipped on a wild yellow lounging robe. I had bought it the day before Delansky busted me at the dance. I had peeped at her hold card that day in the hall. I knew she was a freak. I remembered her eyes chained to my crotch. Now I didn't have on any towel. First chance I got, I'd flash her into a boil through the split in the front of the robe. Maybe I could shoot some cocaine into that yellow virgin arm. That would open her up for sure. I might even steal her from Scarface and put her back on the track tomorrow. I thought, this fine bitch is my speed. She's not a hard-legged dog with a million miles on her. She's no more than 19 and sexy as the rear end of a peacock. I'll play it cool and quiz her. Maybe some ass kicker booted her off the track. Maybe that's how Scarface copped. I'll stay in the pimp roll, but I'll sweeten it with a little high-class bullshit. Maybe I'll wrap some of that gigolo garbage I overheard the white pimps in the joint wrapping. I better call Silas. I'm not ready for trouble with Scarface. I went to the door and unlocked it. I picked up the phone and got Silas. I said, Listen, Jack, this is important. I'm going to be rapping to the big butt yellow broad who lives in 422. I'm going to give you and the broad on the desk a fin apiece. You got to wire me here when Scarface shows. I'm not ready for him to wise up, got me? Silas said, You lucky young son of a bitch. A faggot in a YMCA shower room ain't no luckier. You got salt and pepper, kid? We'll wire you. I'll stall the cage on the way up with him. Can I peep a little kid, huh? I hung up. I felt a cool puff of draft on my ankles. I went into the living room. She had slipped into almost nothing. She was cross-legged in the chair at the window. She turned her head from the street and looked up at me. She had on a thigh-long black negligee with pink butterflies sewn on. A pair of white silk panties gleamed through the black gauze. She curved inside it like a yellow pretty girl. Her ebony hair was steepled on top of her skull like a black satin crown. I saw a frantic tick jerk at a corner of her melon-red mouth. If she turned out to have entesis, 
I swore I would give up whores and get hip to the sissy game. She said, Hi. I ask myself why I'm here. I said, Baby, don't drag the party. Don't ask yourself stupid questions. You can't escape that freak desperate spark. You know, baby, that awful sweet electricity that makes a farm boy kiss a you. The same power that yowls a hot torn cat in the alley. You hip to it? Now just relax. I'm going to roll you up a bomber. Baby, your luck has changed. You've hit the jackpot. You found me. Oh, yeah. My name is Blood. She said, Blood, it's nice to meet you. I'm Christine. Chris I like better. I can't stay long. I have to be careful. My old man is very jealous. I said, Chris, you're going to find out I'm a wild groove. You may stay a lifetime thinking it was only an hour. All we need is an understanding. All you need is a man. Over the top of Chris's head, I saw the runt flash our eyes up at the window. She was just getting into a white Trix car. Twilight was sweeping away daylight with a deep purple broom. I went to the bedroom. I loaded an outfit and tilted it spike up in my pocket. I rolled two bombers, one with reefer, the other in cigarette tobacco. I snorted a thumb tip of cocaine. I got a towel and put it next to the gap under the front door. I lit some incense. I gave Chris the bomber. I lit it and my dud. With a package like Chris, Reefa might confuse me. I might wake up swindled. If she had been Garbo, I still wanted scratch before snatch. I got another chair. We sat there facing each other in the twilight. I waited for the reefer to fill her skull. The bomber in her hand was now a roach. I cocktailed it for her. Her eyes were dreamy. She said, God damn, sweetheart, I'm high. You know, blood, you're going to laugh when I tell you something. Guess what I was thinking when I saw you the first time in that towel? I said, you thought, oh, my itching cat. That pretty brown bastard looks like a pimp. I wish the hell I was still whoring. I sure would like to kiss Mr. Thriller the Killer under that towel. Am I right, sweet freak? She giggled and scooted her chair flush against my knees. She slid her back down in the leather chair. She put the heels of her pink shoes on the seat of my chair. I was sandwiched between her big yellow legs. The street lamp came on spotlighting her. She was still giggling. I fingered the ready jolt of cocaine in my robe pocket. I took it out and hit it against the side of my chair. I saw blue veins pulsing on her inner thighs. The cocaine had me strung on an icy rack. I raised her right leg and rubbed my cheek against it. I crushed her kneecap between my teeth. She moaned. I gazed deep into her eyes. She had laughed tiny pearls of tears that clung to her long, silky lashes. Under the street lamp, her face was innocent and soft as a yellow fawn's. I felt old as Methuselah. She said, Don't look at me like that. I know you can read minds. You give me the creeps with that look. It's like your Svengali or that crazy Russian monk I read about. I said, Chris, you're going to be my whore. We got to share things. That reefer was just an appetizer. Reefer is for low-class skunk broads. Heroin is for chumps bound for the graveyard. Cocaine is for brilliant, beautiful people. Chris, banging cocaine will spin a magic web of music and bells inside your skull. Every pore in your body will feel like daddy's jugging his swiping all over you. It will torch off a racy secret fire of life inside you. It's a miracle, Chris. You get all that thrill and no habit. I know you ain't chicken shit. Are you game to try? She said, 
If you won't scar me or hurt me, if it hurts, promise you'll stop. Don't give me a lot, baby. Where are you going to put it in? I took her left leg and put it in the arm of my chair. I saw a fat line high on her thigh. I eased the spike into it. She flinched. The dropper flashed red. I pressed the bulb slowly. Her eyes widened. Her white teeth bit into her bottom lip. I emptied the dropper. I pulled out the gun. She sat there stiffly. She took her leg off the chair arm. She rubbed the inside knobs of her ankles against my sides. I saw her Adam's apple spasm. I remembered how I puked the first time. I slid my chair back and raced to the bedroom to get the waste basket. I just made it back. She dumped a load into it. I flushed the mess down the toilet and rinsed the basket out. When I got back to her, she was smiling and stroking her legs. She said, I'm sorry I did that naughty thing, Daddy. Oh, oh, but now I feel heavenly. Baby, I'm so glad I came over and got this feeling. Aren't those bells something? Baby, you got a lot of this. I want to do this every day. Stay like this every minute. Let's lie down. I want to form an introduction to Mr. Thriller. I said, Bitch, when you come to me as my whore, I'll keep your skull mellow. Now you got to be joking about Mr. Thriller. He won't have anything to do with a broke bitch that claims a square horn blow as her man. Let's go over there while he's away and get your clothes. You're not married to him, are you? She said, How many girls do you have? Maybe your stable is too big for comfort. I get salty standing in a long line for my loving. I said, Or answer my question. What are you, a roller or something? When you are my whore, you don't worry about anything but your own ass and scratch. Now answer my question. She said, Blood, I didn't want to answer because I am married to him. Leroy, that's my husband. Saved my life, really. He's been wonderful to me. He used to be good looking. He didn't get so insanely jealous until after his accident. We've been waiting over two years for a settlement. Blood, honestly, you are my kind of stud. My life is so screwed up, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to tell you. Would you believe that you're the first fellow I've talked to in over two years? Blood, I don't love Leroy. That cocaine had her speed rapping. I couldn't cop her tonight unless I croaked Scarface. My plans had to change. I had to unhook her from Leroy soon. She'd make bales of scratch. Maybe I could work an angle to get her and a slice of that settlement. Of course, I couldn't wait forever. If I had to, I'd cop without a slice of the settlement. I knew Leroy was going to blow her. He didn't have a chance to hold much longer with that ugly face and that jealous bit. I had to find out if she would level with me all the way. Silas had told me she was an ex-whore. I said, Chris, give me a fast rundown of your life story. I'll have all the answers for you when you finish. She said, If you let me sit in your lap. I nodded, and she climbed onto my lap. She hooked an arm around my neck. Her cheek was against my ear. The cocaine thudded her ticker against my breast. Out of the side of my eye, I saw the runt go into the greasy spoon. I was hoping she wouldn't use the phone just inside the door and interrupt the rundown. I felt her balloon bottom blasting heat into the throbbing cup of my lap. Too bad I worked so hard at the pimp game. Mr. Thriller was playing stiff con on me. He was just a fool at heart. The poor chump wanted to suck out in that bed with this luscious doll. Good thing he had me to stand guard over him. She said, I remember nothing but good until I was 12. Then my mother died. My father had been a kind, good man until then. He always worked. He was a good carpenter. He changed quickly after mama died. 
He took my bed down. He said he wanted me to sleep with him. He told me how lonely his bed was after all those years with Mama. Nothing happened at first. One night, a month later, I had a nightmare. A wild, ferocious animal was sucking my breast. It was terrible. I woke up. It was Papa. I screamed. He slapped me hard. His face was all twisted and hateful. He looked like a crazy stranger. I blacked out. When I came to, Papa was crying and begging me to forgive him. After a while, I would just lie there, numb, and let him use me. I hated his guts. In school, I had the crazy feeling the students could see and feel my shame and filth. By the time I got 15, I was a skeleton. By now, he had me doing everything to him. I'm glad he's dead in hell. Papa, the beast was killing me. I was so nervous, I couldn't wash dishes. I broke dozens. I wasn't eating enough to keep a bird alive. I collapsed one day coming from the grocery. I woke up in a hospital. My system was shot, and I was pregnant. I stayed in the hospital a month. I stayed at Papa's a week after I got out. I took some money while he slept and left Wichita with the clothes on my back. I came here and got a waitress job. A young pimp named Dandy Louie started picking me up when I got off. I thought he was a millionaire. He dressed me up and turned me out. He was a cruel black bastard. He liked to beat me and then screw me. He worked me in a house run by one of his whores. He kept his foot in my ass. Funny thing, I made money even when my belly was stuck way out. A lot of chicks who came there wanted a pregnant girl. I lost the baby while turning a trick. Dandy got five years on a white slave rap two months later. I got a barmaid job and met Leroy. He was playing a gig in the spot. I was a sick girl. I fell out twice while serving the bar. The doctor said I needed rest. He said I couldn't expect to live long unless I rested. Leroy nursed me back to health. He was good to me. I needed someone who cared. I married him. When I was just four months shy of 17, I went with Leroy on a string of one-nighters in the Midwest. The group broke up in Youngstown, Ohio. We were stranded. Leroy got a job in an industrial cleaning plant. The second week, a boiler exploded, and you've seen his face. His lawyer says we can expect a $10,000 settlement any time now. Leroy is driving Roe crazy with his jealousy. I don't mind hustling. I'd be your girl, blood. I go for you, blood. Are things clearer now? What should I do? I said, You've had nothing but heartache. I feel so sorry for you, baby. Now I know you've got to be my woman. I gotta protect you. I got to give you affection and understanding. Don't worry, Angel. With me, life will be as smooth as the snow at Sun Valley. You'll be so happy you'll be out of your mind half the time. With our color combination, we could make a son of a bitching baby together after we get rich. Tell me, does Leroy plan to work the roost for a while? She said, Oh, I forgot to tell you. Last night was his last night. They want him for another six weeks, but he's going to drop the combo. It's too much headache to get them to show for work, sober and on time. He's out now with a booking agent. I think he might go with a big band on an East Coast tour. I hope he gets it. Band leaders want band members' wives to stay at home. Daddy, please figure things out fast. I want to be your girl as soon as possible. I was sucking her scented cheek. I flogged my skull for a quick plot to tear the yellow gold mine from Scarface. The phone rang. She got out of her nest. I rushed to the phone. It was the excited broad on the desk. She said, Forgive me for goofing. 422 went up two minutes ago. I was having a hassle with the checkout. I saw him come in. It didn't register until the second that I called you. You better clean house fast. 
I ran into the living room. I snatched her from the chair. I pulled her to the door. I cracked it. We peeped down the hall. Scarface was 20 yards away from coming down the hall. He had a big stack of papers, maybe sheet music under his arm. He shifted the bundle to his other arm. A paper fluttered to the carpet. He stooped to get it. I saw her door jar. I stepped aside. I slapped her on the rump. She blurred across through the doorway. Scarface was standing with his mouth open, staring toward his now locked door. He was sure he'd seen her. His face was puzzled. I shut my door easy like. I stood with my ear against the door. A bomb of sound shocked my eardrum. Someone was punching his fist against my door. I ran into the bedroom and got my switchblade. I came back to the door. I held my open blade behind me. I opened the door. It was Scarface. He looked like Mr. Hyde, all right. His orange-brown eyes were spinning counterclockwise. I saw a bundle of papers and a careless heap in front of his door. His right mitt was deep in his coat pocket. I saw the faint outline of maybe a skinny lead pipe or a gun barrel. I gauged the moves for a heart stab to beat his mitt out of his pocket. I said, Yeah, Jack, what is it? I'm on the phone with my bondsman. The court just raised my bond on a double murder beef. I'm in a bad mood. I don't want to buy anything. He just stood there like a scar-faced zombie staring at me. He looked down at the carpet in front of my door. I looked down. A pink butterfly lay there like a silent indictment. He heaved his chest and took a deep breath. It was like his last one. He stooped and picked it up. The eerie bastard took his other hand out of his pocket. Tears rolled down from his unblinking orange eyes as he stared at me. His scarred cheeks were quivering as he shredded the butterfly into pink lint on the carpet. He turned and walked away. I shut my door and got a beak load of cocaine. I took the lounging robe off. It was dripping sweat I showered. I sat in Chris's chair at the window. Her sweet odor was still rising from it. For an hour, I heard a loud sobbing whine across the hall. It was Scarface chewing out Chris. Mickey said midnight. I hadn't eaten since morning. I wasn't hungry. Cocaine was a strong con for the belly. I thought, I hope that jealous chunk doesn't croak her. It would be like making a big bonfire out of hundred dollar bills. If she wasn't his wife and I had a rod, I'd go over there and claim her. The phone rang. It was Silas. He said, What happened, kid? Was she a whiz in the sack? Did the Joker catch her? I've been busy. I ain't had a chance to check with you until now. I was worried about you, kid. The broad told me she was late with the wire. I stalled him in the cage. I said, It was very close, Silas. I'm a pimp. I didn't stick her. I'll take care of you and the broad this week and when I pay my rent. Silas, if you get any news on the broad or Scarface, wire me fast. He said, Yeah, kid, you know me. I stay hip to what goes on around here. I'll keep you plugged in, kid. Good night. I'm going home. I hung up and lay across the bed. I wondered if Max and Blondie had the run hemmed up in the alley again. I smoked a reefer. I fell asleep. The phone woke me up. It was the run. She said, Daddy, it's your baby. It's after two. Can I come home? I said, Bitch, what kind of lines you got? She said, I got 30 slats. I'm beat, Daddy. My tricks have been spades. You know how cheap and hard they are to turn. Can I come in? I said, Come on in. Take a bath. Watch your jib, bitch. Don't irritate me. Got a lot on my mind. She been working more than 12 hours. She was beat all right. Within a half hour after her bath, she was snoring beside me. I was dozing when the phone rang. I switched on the light. I picked up. I said, Hello. 
Chris whispered. Daddy, I can't talk long. Leroy's asleep. He found a butterfly that fell off my negligee. He's been raving like a crazy man. He knows I was over there. I got bad news for us. The band spot is out. He called and turned it down. He's going to keep the combo and go through Ohio. His agent had a slew of one-nighters booked for him. He's taking me with him. Daddy, I won't forget us. I'll keep in touch. Maybe he'll go out before we leave tomorrow afternoon. I may get a chance to kiss you goodbye. I love you, blood. I'm going to dream about Mr. Thriller until I... I heard the drowsy whine of Leroy's voice calling her name the instant before she hung up. I turned and looked at the run. Her big mouth was wide open. Frothy slobber ran down her chin. Her sour hair had started to kink at the edges. She needed to go to the beauty shop downstairs. I thought, what kind of breaks am I getting? I'm sinfully good looking. I'm laying here with a lather mouth dog. The ugliest joker in the world is across the hall. He's in the sack with a pretty bitch whose nose is wide open for me. Something's got to be done. Maybe after I cop Chris, I'll have the brass ring in my mitt. I didn't sleep at all after Chris called. The runt won't be up at noon. She went across the street and got on lunch. At two in the afternoon, she was in the street. Silas called. He told me Chris was checking out. I saw Chris and Scarface put their stuff in the car and drive away. The runt came in at 2 a.m. with only 20 slats. She was shying away from white tricks.
Thank you.